Uh, we're talking Manchester Derby. We're talking about how do we win this game. One thing I would say straight away is that I firmly do believe that, um, and I, I've never, I don't think I've ever done this in nearly ten years of doing um, a doing the United Stand and multiple Derby previews. I don't think I've ever not done a combined eleven, and I don't think I've ever done a combined eleven like this. Manchester United versus Manchester City combined eleven is Manchester City. In the past, I'll have always tried to get somebody in, but right here, right now, Man City is it. They have got, in every position, I think they can say, it's our player, it's our player, it's our player. Now, that's quite concerning, isn't it? Where's the progress in that? Where is the progress in Manchester United if this is the first time I've ever said it's a clean slate uh, of Man City players in a combined eleven? Um, I know some people have said it in the past, but I've never really believed that. But right here, right now, I think it's a clean sweep of Man City players in a combined eleven, And that's a terrible reflection on Manchester United Football Club. Um, is it a bad reflection on Ten Hag? I don't know about that, but it's certainly... I think, I think it's a terrible reflection on the football club on how it's been run, that it seems to me year, year after year after year. I think there was a time probably five or six years ago where you were getting four or five Man United players in a combined 11. But it's just gradually getting less. And now it's like, well, nobody gets in. So it's a hard game on Sunday. Don't don't you don't you believe it? I know they aren't pulling up trees at the moment, but after last season, City, City terrify me, says Conrad. And why aren't people offended by Anana's profile pic on Twitter then? He symbolises himself as a Black Panther, says Leon. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, anyway, this is the team that I think Eric Ten Hag is going to pick to beat Pep Guardiola. I'm sure you're all terrified, Man City fans, but I think this is how he's going to go and I'm going to explain why. Anada will be in goal. His back four will be Delo, Varane, Maguire and Reguilon. I don't think there's any complaints about that and I can't see him changing that and he shouldn't change that. I know he likes Lindelof, but it's not worth putting Lindelof in for Varane or Maguire and then it goes wrong. He's, you know, Ten Hag is right to pick Maguire and Varane and if it goes wrong, I don't think anyone can complain I mean, they might complain about the performances, but you can't complain about the, set, the the pick of the back four. So I think he's going to go like that. Casemiro has to come back in. You know, he, he's, he couldn't play on Tuesday because of suspension. He had a bit of a knock for the Sheffield United game, but nobody's pulling up trees in that position. He's the best player we've got in that position. Casemiro has to play. Personally, I'd like to see Amrabat playing next to him, but I think he's going to go with McTominay. For some reason at the moment, McTominay is rated by uh, Ten Hag. I think he's still living off the, the Brentford goals. Really, the Sheffield United game should have seen him out of the team. If that didn't see him out of the team, the first half against Copenhagen should have seen him out of the team. But I just think he'll pick him again. And, you know, you could say Amrabat, you could say Eriksen, but I think he will pick um, McLean. Bruno will obviously play. He's the captain. He will play. And then I think his front three will be what his preferred front three is. Rashford, Hoyland and Anthony. Rashford will definitely play. Hoyland definitely plays, and I think he'll pick Anthony for his defensive work rate. I agree with you, Victor. I just think Rashford's going to score at the weekend, but that is the team I think he will go with. I, I really don't think we'll see... I, I'm, I, I'm not going to say I'm 100% sure, but I'm pretty confident that that's going to be the 11. What would I do? Look, if you want to beat Manchester City, a few easy stats. They lost their last two away games, haven't they? They've lost to Wolves in the Premier League. They've lost to Wolves and they've lost to Arsenal. They only beat Brighton by two goals to one. They are not pulling up trees. And there's a real opportunity for United to, 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 to pounce on that. We've won our last two home games. I know they weren't convincing, but we have. So you've got City losing their last two away games. Man United winning their last two home games. I think there's, um, I think there's a real opportunity for Manchester United here. And this is where I disagree with Jordan. Because Jordan says Eriksen feeds the front and we need him against City. I, I really don't. I don't agree with that. Jordan, if we were playing at home against Aston Villa or Crystal Palace or someone like that, I'd play Ericsson because of how well he's been playing. But we're not controlling the midfield. Not many teams do. We're not going to control the midfield. So why would you play Ericsson, who doesn't pick up the runners, isn't particularly quick and isn't particularly physical? For 90% of that midfield's game on Sunday, they're going to be running and chasing. Why would you put Ericsson in the team? He's not going to be on the ball. He's not very physical. We're not going to have the ball. You've got to go with two midfielders who are energetic. And you can't have Casemiro on his own. So I think he'll go with McTominay. I'd like it to be Amrabat. I think he'll go with McTominay, maybe for a bit of height as well, because they've got Rodri. They've got, you know, 
their centre backs, etc. They've got Haaland. So I, th I, I think McTominay is nailed on to play. And as much as I'd like to see Eriksen play, unless you're going to drop Bruno, it would be suicide. We are not going to have a lot of the ball. We're going to have to counter attack. We're going to be hitting a lot of long balls for Rashford to run onto and Hoyland. I think you've got. There is, it would be absolutely suicide to put Christian Eriksen in that team. Unless we're going to have 60% possession against Man City at Old Trafford, which would be illogical based on how we're playing at the moment and how Man City play. I see a game where Man City have got 60-70% possession. United are counter-attacking. We're playing deep. We're well organised. It's a back six. We deprive them of passing angles, you know, pick up the runners, etc. Um, I think that, I think if you keep Erling Haaland quiet, we win the game. I think that's the key to Man City this season. With no De Bruyne, they really haven't got the rhythm going. And I think if you keep Erling Haaland quiet, you keep you, you win the game. There's a real opportunity here for Harry Maguire and Varane to have a, have, a, have a really good game again. You know what, actually? It just reminds me. I saw a lot of player ratings from Copenhagen who were giving like Harry Maguire 7 or 8. And were giving Varane 5 or 6. And uh, Manchester Evening News did it as well. I was like, what game of football were you watching? I thought Varane played really well against Copenhagen and showed why we why we miss him but again I just feel there's a bit of an agenda on a player again I couldn't believe the amount of player ratings that were giving Varane a five or a six and then giving Maguire a seven or an eight I mean Maguire scored a goal I get that but defensive performance I thought Varane was was superb against Copenhagen so there's a real opportunity for Maguire and Varane to be you know Man of the match contenders again if you keep Haaland quiet I think we win I'm going with a 2-1 win for Manchester United by the way I think Man City will have a lot of the ball, but I think we can frustrate them and I think we can counter on them. And we beat Man City like this before. I've seen games where Man City have had loads of possession against us, but we've had real joy picking them off on the break. And I think I can see it happening again. Uh, I agree with the front three, all pace for the counter. And I think we will find joy against City. Really need to finish our chances. Then we'll have a chance here, says Sean. Yeah, I think against Man City at Old Trafford, if you can score the first goal or get in front... The crowd react to it and the players react to the crowd and then you're buzzing and then you're playing on adrenaline and I think that's how you do it. What we can't do, and we've seen it before, we've seen it against Man City before, we've seen it against Liverpool before, what we can't be doing is conceding in the first 10, 20 minutes. We concede in the first 10, 20 minutes where they carve us open, those heads, those chins hit the grass and um, you know we're out of it. Uh, MDO says it'll be 6-0. Look, I'm not for one second not acknowledging the fact that Man City could drill us. Like they really could, they they could they could embarrass us, and some might say that we are on the verge of a beating, and some might say, Mark, you yourself have said we'll get a few drubbings this season, and we will. But my feeling is that too many people have written us off. That will be a motivator to Ten Hag and the players. Too many people are writing us off. Too many people haven't watched Man United, Man City games in the last five years where we've been written off and got a result. We did it last season under Ten Hag. I mean, look, you know, no, it was an offside goal, but. We actually did deserve to win that game. I think at Old Trafford, we've looked pretty good against the, the, the top sides when it matters. I don't think we lost at home last season against one of the traditional top six, as far as I remember. So, you know, people, the, these, these themes are important. 